Hey guys, it's Bina, and I want to go over my update for my pulverized shapeshifting werebear build. Um, so basically, we're level 79, we're 27 hours in, we're still using the same concept as uh, like using wind shear and then pulverize and shapeshifting between human form and werebear form um, for most of our damage. So, so this makes it that we deal a lot of damage like this, and we also have like a lot of sustain with our um, with our spirit. I do not have a very good um, Umbral aspect at the moment. Umbral, which gives you uh, spirit on damaging crowd-controlled enemies. And because we're crowd-controlling, we're slowing enemies all the time. Basically, every enemy hit now gives us only one spirit, but it could go up to four spirit. Um, so yeah, even then, it still pretty feel, uh, feels pretty good. Uh, Trample is giving you 40 spirit on cast. Uh, Blood Howl is also giving you spirit and movement speed. And then we have Earth and Bulwark. Whenever we're unstoppable, we're also getting movement speed. And then we have our ultimate, which is giving us um, basically a lot of survivability. And with the Malignant Heart to pull everything towards you when you have an ultimate, it just freezes everything. You brings everything towards you. And you can just like basically de delete anything that is in front of you uh, very, very safely. So I am running tier 25s right now since I'm level 79. I found that going closer to your level and then going faster is much better XP per hour than trying to go 10 levels above you. Even if like I'm kind of like clearing pretty fast 10 levels above me, like basically two shotting or three shotting elites. Um, I found that just one shotting elite and going at move and speed cap really makes a big difference in terms of XP per hour. And I'll be releasing a new uh, Nightmare Dungeon tier list very, very soon. As soon as I have all the data, but uh, for those of you that want to have access to the early data, uh, the link for, to my spreadsheet will be in the description of the video below. Um, so what, what I think about this is that the more we are that gather these uh, types of data, uh, the better it's going to be and the more accurate the lists are going to be. So we can like cross-reference who has like the highest Nightmare Dungeon per XP per hour. Um, like, yeah, basically cross-reference with other spreadsheets and see whatever is the best. Um, so yeah, so pretty much, uh, the gameplay is as you see on the screen, um, wind shear, pulverize, shapeshifting between human and werebear form, and then going really, really fast. We have like more unstoppable uptime than builds like, um, the, the, than any grizzly rage build right now. Um, basically because we're having access to trample and we're having, we get access to, um, earth and bulwark. So, all right, let's go into the skills and uh, the skills, the affixes, the gear, and whatever I changed from my last update that was at level 72. All right, so here we are in game. Uh, basically, we can see that I am sitting at 6,500 attack power, 5,200 5, armor, and almost 7k life. Uh, I am sitting at a very comfortable 145% base movement speed without any bonuses. We're getting 9% out of Blood Howl. We're getting... Uh, Earthen Bulwark will be giving us 22% um, with the Ghost Walker aspect. And also Trample will also give us access to 22%. So we're going to have like a very, very comfortable, very close to move and speed cap. Um, so as you, as you can see, Blood Howl and then 176 whenever I have Unstoppable up. Um, that will also be increased by my boots whenever I evade. I gain 75% move and speed. And then ideally, I'd like to have um, movement speed when you kill an elite, which will give you access to like more than 40% extra movement speed. So you get more access to different ways of getting to the movement speed cap. Um, so yeah, basically for movement speed, you want to get like movement speed on your boots and on your amulet and uh, movement speed after killing an elite on your boots. So that is what really makes the build feel super, super good. Um, Found out like pretty much any build that you're trying to play, if you can focus on getting move and speed cap, it will just make everything go smoother, basically. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go over the aspects. So nothing changed much from our last time that we updated this. So we have the quicksand aspect here for earth skill slows on our helm. Um, I changed my um, I changed my my chest piece that had defensive um, defensive rolls on it and also had uh, Disobedience for more armor. I changed this one to Insatiable Fury since I found it, just for the extra damage. If you're trying to push Nightmare Dungeon content, like higher Nightmare Dungeons, you will want to switch to a defensive chest. But um, if you're just farming the overworld or farming like close to your level, Insatiable Fury will give you more damage because it gives you plus three rings to all of your werebear skills. So that is why we're using this. 
uh, on our gloves, we're using core skill, the increased damage based on your amount of fortify. This aspect could go on the amulet for more damage. Um, right now, I have uh, the accelerating aspect on my amulet, which is giving me critical strikes uh, with my core skill, increase my attack speed. Um, basically, this makes it that it feels smoother to play. Uh, getting more attack speed will give you access to, like, less frames stuck into the animation of doing pulverize. So that is why I go with this one here. But ideally, in the complete end game, I would probably switch out um, uh, the retaliation aspect to go on my amulet and the accel accelerating aspect to go on my gloves. For our pants, we're still using the uh, plates of mending stone. So the earthen bulwark is increased to six seconds, and every kill uh, with an earth skill will replenish your, your earthen bulwark's barrier. Basically giving you access to even more uptime on Unstoppable, and that means more uptime on this sweet movement speed. On our boots, we're going for the Ghostwalker aspect for Unstoppable and Phasing, and giving us, uh, well, not Unstoppable, for the movement speed while we're Unstoppable and Phasing. Uh, phasing giving you access to move freely through enemies, so even if you're gathering a big pack of enemies, uh, you'll be able to move freely uh, uh, through them, basically. Uh, on our weapon, we're using the Pulverized Shockwave aspect for 200%. Uh, we're using a two-hander here because it's giving us access to like uh, a really, really big damage increase compared to using a one-hander and a totem. Um, there could be some situations later on that maybe you would want to have like a one-hander and a, a totem. But uh, yeah, I'll have to check in the complete endgame just for damage. Pulverized with a Shockwave on a two-hander just is much better. Again, on our amulet, we're getting accelerating aspect. We already talked about this one. Uh, on our ring, earth sign horror, basically pulverized on our earth skill. This enables us to have a lot of synergies with uh, other uh, other skills and other aspects. And then we have umbral aspect on our ring here for resource generation. Basically, every time we hit an enemy, because they will always be always be slowed, you will always get some resource back. So I only have like a one here. Uh, this one is from the codex. But you can go up to four primary resource when you crowd control one enemy. So if you crowd control ten enemies, uh, then you're getting forty resource back. And uh, since our our pulverize only costs thirty eight spirit, uh, basically it just will cost nothing as long as you hit four enemies, uh, ten enemies. All right, so that is it for the um, aspects. We'll go over the stats now. I still have maximum life, cooldown, life on kill, total armor. By the way, I will have a link in the description for the planner that I plan to use in the end game uh, with the full Paragon board, with the full uh, full aspects, full uh, stats, affixes on the items. So uh, make sure to click on that one. It's going to be the max roll planner. Uh, so yeah, so for now I have maximum life, cooldown reduction, life on kill and total armor. Ideally, I just want maximum life and total armor and the rest would be like stuff like willpower and all stats to be able to reach um, uh, certain nodes, certain bonus on the Paragon board. Although life on kill is pretty good, and cooldown reduction is not wasted because we're getting more uptime on Petrify. Insatiable Fury, basically this, this one is a unique, you don't have choice on the uh, stats, but if you would not go for this, you would go for something like on your pants, which would be damage reduction, damage reduction while fortified, damage re reduction from close enemies, uh, total armor, any sort of tanky... Um, Tinky stat on here, on your chest and on your pants. On your glove, you're going for attack speed, ranks of pulverize, crit chance, and you'd like to have critical strike damage with earth skills. Uh, I have willpower, which is not wasted at all. Um, so yeah, that's what we go for here. On your boot, we go for... Um, ideally, uh, sometimes I like to go with extra charges to evade, but I found that the Eva the movement speed when you evade feels really good to be able to reach that 200% movement speed cap in multiple ways. So if you get it when you kill an elite, you get extra movement speed. That's one way to reach the cap. If you if you evade, you get movement speed as well. That's another way to reach the cap. Um, as long as, as well as having blood howl on stop the the um, the ghost walker aspect as well. So the more ways you have to reach movement speed cap, the more uptime you'll have on 200% movement speed and the better your build will feel, and the more XP per hour you'll be able to get. So, if you're not going for things like Uber Lilith, or where in Uber Lilith fight, I would strongly suggest having like multiple charges to evade, but just for re regular farming, I think the movement speed after evading is uh, pr pretty much your best option that you can get here. Um, so yeah, I'm going for movement speed. I'd like to have movement speed after killing an elite, um, but we have willpower 
dodge chance against distant enemy, intelligence. The intelligence is pretty much wasted. Uh, and another really good stat you can get here is damage reduction while injured. So that one goes pretty high in terms of damage reduction. Um, and you can pretty much, uh, it's not a wasted stat on the boots. So that's why I would like to have it here. You could also go for spirit cost reduction, uh, especially if you don't have a good umbral aspect, which would also help you uh, to cast your pulverizes. On your weapon, you want to go for vulnerable damage first, uh, critical strike damage, willpower, and critical strike damage with earth skills. Um, there are other stats you can go here. You could go for something like all stats that will make you able to reach certain nodes in your Paragon board. Um, like certain bonuses, for example, extra crit strike damage with earth skills if you reach like a, cer a certain level of intelligence. Um, those are good stats. So, but this is the one I have right now. On my amulet, uh, again, damage reduction. Uh, damage reduction stats are always good, but you want to prioritize movement speed because movement speed is the best stat in the entire game, in my opinion. So you want to really, really reach. I keep focusing on this, but like you really want to reach 200% movement speed as much of the time as possible. So movement speed, um, damage reduction stats. Usually people put cooldown here, but since we're not using uh, a Grizzly Rage build, we don't need to put cooldown here. You could go Spirit Cost Reduction. Uh, there are other stats that you can go for, like uh, Total Armor while in wearable form. Okay, I forgot to talk about this one. Total Armor while in wearable form. Again, it's um, it's multiplicative with the total armor that you get on your other stats and with Disobedience. So there's like two, two separate buckets for armor. You have like the... Um, so you have your base armor that is multiplied by total armor and disobedience. These are all in the same bucket. And then there's another bucket for armor, which is armor while in werebear or werewolf form, which you can get either on your amulet and boots or amulet and pants, uh, depending if you're talking about werebear or werewolf. But um, yeah, so that's another stat that you can get on your amulet. Also total armor. So movement speed and, this, and uh, defensive stats is what you want here. On our rings, we ideally want Vulnerable Damage, Critical Strike Chance, Critical Strike Damage, and Maximum Life. Um, although I'll have three of those here, and I'll have three of those in here as well. Um, the other stats are not wasted. Damage to close enemies is also pretty good for our build. For our Spirit Boons, still going with Damage Reduction from Elite. Uh, in this one here, you can go with pretty much anything. Attack Speed is good, Maximum Life is good, Crit Chance is good, and Avian Rat is also... Not terrible early on because you don't have a lot of critical strike damage, but this is only additive. Uh, here I go for Fortify uh, for 15% when you use a defensive skill. So every time we're going to use Blood Howl or Earthen Bulwark, we'll be able to Fortify for 15%. That's going to keep our Fortify up. And then you go for Calm Before the Storm and every 20 kill cause your next Earth skill to overpower. As you go later into the end game, this will become more and more... Uh, not useless, but it will become less powerful than in the early game because overpower scales with your life and, and with your fortify, but not with any other buckets of damage. So we will probably go into masochistic, but for now, I still think that obsidian slam when you're speed clearing is pretty good. Um, as for our paragon board here, actually, let's go into the skill tree first. Skill tree, we're still using a wind shear to get a 20% movement speed. Again, more uh, options to reach... Um, maximum movement speed cap of 200%. We're going to pulverize into pulverize little 20% reduced damage for 4 seconds. We still get the extra core skill damage for more spirit cost. We get the 9% movement speed when we use a werewolf, uh, when we're in a werewolf form, and it this uh, persists for 3 seconds after, so each time we, lose, we use Blood Howl, we'll also be able to keep this 9% movement speed. Uh, we get the 9% damage reduction while in werebear form, Function pretty much the same as this, and we get the 6% crit chance against close enemies. Earth and Bulwark, we only go for the one that gives us Unstoppable. I might put more points into this one as we reach higher into the endgame, but we'll see about it. For now, just these two points are fine. Blood Howl giving us more Spirit. Um, if you find yourself that you're not in any need of Spirit, you can switch to move 15% uh, attack speed for 4 seconds. And this like resets in, on every kill you get, but so if you're doing easy content close to your level and going fast, you'll pretty much have this all the time. We go for Spirit when we transform in human form for more sustain. Uh, we go with Trample, and then we go Trample cost, uh, grants, us 40 sp uh, grants us 40 Spirit. So not only is this a movement ability, also gives us Spirit, and also stuns enemies if you, if you run them into walls. So this can be like, it's a utility 
it's a sustain option and it's also a damn it also doesn't do like that terrible damage so that's pretty good for this crushing earth again damage damage here uh just just we basically try to grab as many damage um skills as possible uh defiance for damage we go natural disaster for damage and we go resonance for damage this one is especially good since we're always switching between human and wherever form and we're also using a storm skill and then an earth skill right afterwards so this is tripled um our our ultimate here is petrify petrify will basically um stun L, um well it will petrify all enemies essentially making them unable to do anything and then they will also give us 25 spirit whenever we kill them so we'll always have um, all of our spirit and then our hearts. So our heart will pull all enemies towards us when we use our ultimate. So that will essentially make us able to spam pulverize as much as we like. And as long as we're killing stuff, we have infinite spirit. So that is for Petrify. And then uh, also this is good on bosses because this will increase the damage that they take uh, from critical strikes. So on boss, you want to open up with this. And then use your, your use your pulverize, and it will take more damage, and it will be easier to kill them with this. Uh, again, shape shifting skills transform you. It deals fifteen percent increased damage, and then uh, damage reduction here while we uh, shape shift. For our key passive, we're using Ursine Strength for thirty percent increased damage while healthy, and also twenty percent additional maximum life. So that is pretty much it for the skills. Uh, let's go over the hearts actually. Uh, I keep forgetting hearts, uh, but uh, we get the Brutal Heart that is basically suppressing damage. This is just even more damage reduction. I am playing hardcore. You could go for something else. I don't have any Wrathful Hearts right now. Um, eventually, when I get to level 100, I will switch to a Wrathful Heart, most, most likely. But for the moment, I think I don't really need it. And um, I'm just clearing really, really fast anyways without them. We use uh, the Devious Heart to pull all enemies toward us when we use an ultimate. And then we also have another one, which is defensive, which gives us immunity when we lose 20% of our life in a single hit. So again, playing hardcore, this will be uh, pretty good for you. So going into our Paragon Tree here, where are we in the Paragon Tree? So we basically came here, we grabbed all the maximum life nodes here. We put Vulnerable there, grabbing all the Dexterity that we could. We go up here to go into Ancestral Guidance. After spending Spirit, you get you deal 30% increased damage for 5 seconds. You basically, this this is always up, basically. Um, you have, like, pretty much 100% uptime on this. We go for the Spirit on Kill, which is very important. Uh, spirit on Kill will make, especially if you don't have a good Umbral, will make the build feel so much better. And you really want to feel, uh, like, to have, like, the feeling that you have infinite resource for the build to feel good. Then we go for, again, maximum life here, and we have some nodes of maximum spirit. Um, I sw I just go right into the next board here. I, I did not go for this glyph socket yet, because I wanted to go for like other nodes first, like survival instinct, and I want to go for earth and devastation as well. But we will come back for this one later. So survival instinct basically giving us a 50% damage increase whenever we are at uh, full health and mobs are at 50%. So this is kind of like an execute. We're grabbing this one here for Shapeshifter. Every time we Shapeshift and uh, use our Pulverize, our Shapeshifting skill will have a 20% chance to be a critical strike. So this is very, very good for our like the way our build is set up. Uh, we're also grabbing some very nice total armor while in wearable form, which I said earlier are multiplicative. Um, so those are very good to take. Then we're moving into the uh, Earthen Devastation uh, Paragon board. We're grabbing the Fang and Claw here. Um, grabbing some uh, Critical Strike damage with Earth skills. We're going to grab some more of this here later on, but right now I'm trying to reach Earth and Devastation to have Earth skill deal 30% increased damage to enemies afflicted by crowd control, and all enemies are going to be crowd controlled because of our slow on our helm. So that pretty much covers the build, guys. Uh, this is my level 79 update. I will have some more updates for you guys, and as we reach closer and closer to level 100, uh, the bill will start to feel much, much, much better. Even better than right now. And right now, it does feel great. So I think there will be no problem clearing Nightmare Dungeon 100 with this. Uh, since Nightmare Dungeon 100 were nerfed quite a bit. And enemies are now pretty much wet noodles. And we can face tank all of the enemies in Nightmare Dungeon 100. Assuming you build correctly. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it for the build. 
Um, see you guys in the next update.